السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الذي لا إله سواه والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا محمد رسول الله وآله وأصحابه ومن والاه اللهم افتح مسامع قلوبنا لذكرك Oh Allah, please open the hearing channels of our hearts to that which reminds us of you. Allahumma taqabbal minna siyamana wa qiyamana. Allahumma arzuqna siyama wa qiyama shahri ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban. Allahumma ja'alna min al-lazina yastami'oon al-qawla fa yattabi'oon ahsana. Oh Allah, please help us be of those who listen to the words of admonition and follow the best of them. Ameen. Uh, we continue, alhamdulillah, in the reflections from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more specifically from the very first parts of the Qur'an, the very early ayat in Surat Al-Baqarah, and always in the context of with qala rabbuka lil malaikati إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةٌ That the concept of Khilafah on earth, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in the Qur'an, being the responsibility of the human beings on earth. And that's what we were somehow elaborating upon, that that Khilafah, first of all, is a representation by the human beings of Allah Azza wa Jal. And if are to represent as human beings successfully God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth to represent Him, then we are to be um, adorned and we are to have the characteristics and the traits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah be exalted of any analogy. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. But the traits of Allah Azza wa Jal at our human level and the best possible human level. So again, that comes to our akhlaq. That comes to our character. What we are inside. If inside of us, as Allah knows, and then we express that in our external activities. If inside of us, we are endowed with rahmah, hilm, shukr. Sabr, Karam, Jood, and so on. These are characteristics of Allah Azza wa Jal at our human possible level. Then we would be then representing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. And because what we do and what we say of comportment and behavior, um, what we do and what we say simply is a result of what we are inside, whether we do that individually or collectively. The product of our behavior and conduct is simply uh, an expression of what we are inside. I repeat, whether it is individually or collectively, whether it is for uh, religious matters, social matters, family matters, political matters, economic matters, any matter of life, Whatever the human beings do, they are simply exposing what they are inside. And what we are inside in order to be the khulafa of Allah on earth must be compatible with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and therefore what He is subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is Rahim, merciful and lovingly merciful. He wants us to be merciful and lovingly merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is patient and He loves from us to be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forbearing, is halim and He wants us to be halim at our possible human level. He is subhanahu wa ta'ala infinite in the scope of His attributes. And it is in that context that you are saying what you are saying. I hope you remembered uh, all of that. And that we were at the junction of where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابَ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ وَاسْتَعِينُوا 
بالصبر والصلاة That's where we stopped at واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاة وإنها لكبيرة إلا على الخاشعين الذين يظنون أنهم ملاقوا ربهم وأنهم إليه راجعون So Allah Azza wa Jal in the context of what we mentioned last time and that we learned from that ourselves واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاة and seek help and find help in sabr and in salah in the uh, fulfillment of our duties of khilafa on earth we are going to encounter challenges and Allah Azza wa before this ayah was speaking about the challenges in the hearts of some that lead them to be envious and arrogant and therefore reject what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and wants. And that's a sickness of the heart. And that sickness of the heart of hubbu riyasati wal jah, that Allah sa- says, in other words, in some way, in order to help yourselves against that, do that. Practice patience and practice salah. A sabr, and we mentioned sabr is when we restrain ourselves against the drives that are inside of us. And we restrain ourselves in such a way as to conform to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. We restrain ourselves from using our senses our minds, our hands, our resources, our power, our abilities individually or collectively, we restrain ourselves from indulging ourselves to conform with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. That is sabr. And sabr is oftentimes, as it is said, very mur, very bitter. But the fruits of the bitterness of patience are very sweet and those of us who will choose not to practice patience and the bitterness of patience the outcome will be very bitter in akhirah in the hereafter for sure and even in this world in this dunya so we have to seek help by subhanallah by struggling against our own drives our own likes, our own dislikes, we have to strive against that in life. Nobody gains anything serious in this life without struggle, isn't it? Sabr man sabara, ghafara, as it is said. Man sabara, ghafara. Those who practice patience will earn, will harvest, will be successful. Those who don't, they will regret it in dunya and in akhirah. We mentioned also that sabr may also mean sawm, as the ulama and as in our sharia sometimes the word, the, uh, sometimes sawm is called sabr. And it is of course obvious why, because sawm is about practicing sabr against doing and indulging in that which we like to indulge in and would like to do like eating halal food and so on you don't do that in, in Ramadan and you are patient and you hold yourself in addition to the fact that Psalm as we mentioned many times at different levels uh, is about controlling our senses and that our senses must fast our eyes, our ears our tongues our touch, our hands, our legs must also fast. In other words, we must restrain them from being used in ways that are harmful and in ways that are incompatible with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And that requires a lot of sabr. Also, we said of the levels and the maratib, very important, of fasting, is that our hearts fast. How do our hearts fast? Again, by restraining 
our thoughts and our feelings and our, and our emotions from indulging in that which Allah does not love. To harbor feelings and emotions and thoughts about Allah or about the creatures of Allah under any circumstance, feelings and emotions and thoughts that are wrong and evil and therefore incompatible with the Khilafah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. That's so also. I have to stop my heart from being allowed to be in that state and in that condition and that requires sabr of course so psalm is called sabr also so this ayah many ulama say it also means help yourselves with psalm with fasting because fasting develops an energy inside of us and a will inside of us and an ability inside of us to say no to what we the nafs wants and Fasting helps us develop that energy and that energy we can use to say no in our lives to so many things that are otherwise detrimental and painful and hurtful. Istainu. We seek help in that second. Wassalah. Istainu. Istainu. Bissabri. Wassalah. Salah is a means by which we also develop spiritual positive energy spiritual will and strength that are positive salah along with sawm and sabr help cleanse our hearts when we perform salah the right way that's one of the means of cleansing our hearts of course you do know and we must know that salah is dhikr of Allah salah is Dhikr of Allah Azza wa Salah is intended of its objectives is that we are in dhikr of Allah Azza wa And therefore performing salah, nafila salah, especially also after the obligatory salawah is a great way of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And salah is dhikr. And what does dhikr do? Cleanses the heart. أَلَا إِنَّ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَقَالَةً أَلَا وَإِنَّ سَقَالَةَ الْقُلُوبِ ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى As Rasulullah sallallahu mentions, everything has a means by which to be cleansed and the means by which the heart is cleansed is ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فَالصَّلَاةُ ذِكْرُ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Salah is for ذِكْر and is dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that helps our hearts be cleansed and when our hearts are cleansed when our hearts are cleansed spiritually then we are able to discern the realities of things the way they are we are able to see beauty as beauty and it is to conceive of moral beauty as beautiful to conceive as of moral ugliness as ugliness because moral ugliness is not seen by the physical eye moral spiritual beauty or ugliness are seen by what by the eye of the heart it's to conceive of that and when the heart is cleansed it's going to be able to conceive of the things of realities the way they really are that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارِ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ He says subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not the eyes external that go blind. It is the eyes of the heart that go blind. It is the hearts that go blind. And when a heart goes blind, it's not a physical blindness, it's a spiritual blindness. Because it's not a physical eye, it's a spiritual eye. When our hearts are diseased, when our hearts are sick with ailments of immorality and lack of spirituality, and such as greed and hate and, and love for dunya and for leadership and for power and for wealth and 
arrogance and delusion and conceitedness, when our hearts are that sick, then they will not be able to discern moral beauty from moral ugliness. As salah helps us do that. Dhikr of Allah is intended to cleanse our qulub so that our qulub are going to be able to see clearly. And then when I see clearly, I know what to do in my life. And therefore, I cannot as a human being, I cannot as a Muslim, I cannot as a possible Khalifa of Allah on earth, I cannot, I cannot allow my heart to be sick, to be blind, because how would I navigate in life? That's why many of us human beings who make the wrong decisions, the terrible decisions, the false decisions, the immoral decisions, the unintelligent decisions, even the irrational decisions, let alone the immoral decisions and unspiritual decisions and non shari decisions, because our kulub, the kulub are sick. Even if a person, as we mentioned last night, is of a high IQ. And the way we gauge IQs is by solving technical problems. But a person without aql and without qalb, with a high IQ, can still be very immoral, can still be very criminal, isn't it? Because the qalb is bankrupt, the qalb is blind. And why is the qalb is blind? Of the reasons, not the only, of the reasons our qulub are blind is by lack of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Lack of salah, lack of proper salah and proper dhikr and proper dua. And of course also by committing more dhunub, our hearts get blinder and blinder so Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَالصَّلَاةِ And let me say a few more things here, reminding myself about that, my dear brothers and sisters, and then you. First, Salah. In order for that Salah to be the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal that would be helpful to us, it has to be, of course, we have to perform it in the way that shows that we care for Salah. In a way, when we perform Salah, such that all the elements needed for the identity of a true Salah are there. One of which, of course, in the Salata Kanat, Al Mu'minina, Kitab Mawquta. One thing that you all know, may Allah bless you, and I remind you and myself. That for salah to be salah, first of all, external things, that it has to be on time. I cannot delay fajr until after the sun rises. That's not salah. Because time decided and ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the morning salah, for fajr salah is from the break of dawn until before the sun rises. That's the only time I can perform Salat al-Fajr. Not after that, nor before that, of course. Similarly, Salat al-Maghrib. I cannot perform Salat al-Maghrib before the sun sets. It's after the sun sets. But I cannot delay it until Isha time. Especially for no reason. Or delay it until dawn. I cannot do that. And so on and so forth. Allah says, كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا And that teaches us discipline. And that teaches us to discipline our hearts and our nafs. Because nafs has volition and will. But if I confront my nafs to discipline it and to strive to compel it and oblige it by these divine schedules, then I'm going to develop again that positive energy that I'm going to use for other things that I need in life, that Allah wants from me or Allah does not want from me. When we fall into sin, it is usually because even when we know, 
When we know, it's because we lack will. We lack will to stop and not practice that sin and commit that sin. And that will is that energy inside of us that we don't have. But when we practice the way Allah Azawajal tells us, such as siyam, as we mentioned, fasting, and salah, and we commit in salah, not just physically standing there, because Allah, as He tells us, He doesn't look at our physical appearances and bodies. In Allah, لا ينظر إلى صوركم وأشكالكم In other words, Allah does not look at your external appearances. You're standing there. You're standing there. That's what counts. Now, what counts is not just standing there. وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ He says. Nay, Allah looks, however, at your hearts. At your hearts. For example, when I am in Salah, is my heart in Salah? Or it is somewhere else? When I come and say, Allahu Akbar, God, Allah is greater than. Now if when I say, Allahu Akbar, I am navigating and surfing in all other areas of the world, then who is Akbar? Those thoughts and those feelings. Who is greater? When I say Allah is greater and I mean it, and that's why it is greater, not greatest. Allahu Akbar, and Allah is greatest. But in Salah you say Allahu Akbar, you don't say Allahu Akbar, Akbar. You say Allahu Akbar. Translated accurately means God is greater than, and it's left open. So when I come to Salah, Allah is greater than anything, any thought any feeling, any aspiration, any hope, any fear, any problem, any Allahu Akbar, any concern, Allahu Akbar. If something comes to my mind or to my thoughts to distract me and to turn me away from that realization of Allah, Allahu Akbar, it rejects it. So that's why it is takbiratul ihram. Takbiratul ihram. Once you say Allahu Akbar, it's like you, you entered into a state of ihram for hajj. And what happens when you enter into a state of ihram for hajj? When you start saying, Labbaik Allahumma umrahu, Labbaik Allahumma hajjah. That means, once you do that, many things become haram. When I say Allahu Akbar, that's takbiratul ihram. That I entered hajj in salah. That means the world is haram. Everything else is haram. I'm standing in front of God, in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. I must not allow my thoughts and my feelings to roam and to surf wherever they are. And to look right and left and, you know, to scratch and, and to scratch my beard and, you know, and to make sure my, you know, my, my coat is, is, you know, when I'm in salah, then, then I'm repeating, make sure that my, my coat is well and my amama is well or my kufi is fine. Or... People in salah, يعني, subhanallah, subhanallah. Subhanallah. Everything is haram for me. Takbiratul ihram. I should focus my awareness that Allah Azza wa Jal is watching me. That Allah Azza wa Jal is watching in my heart. And if I am in that condition, first thing my, my head falls. Min al I don't think a person in khushu'a would be like this. If one is in khushu'a inside, this falls. This falls. You fall. And you cannot move your finger. 
you cannot turn right or left. You feel that you are overwhelmed if your qalb is there. One person was in salah. It is said in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa In some ulama say, no, it was the, the great tabi'i Sayyidina Sa'id ibn Musayyib. There are differences as to this text. The person was in salah, and this was 14 centuries ago, mashallah, even in those days. And he, in his salah, he was, you know, doing this. And many people do that. Just this, just this, watching me. And this, uh, like that. So he said, لو خشع قلب هذا he pointed out to his companions and said لو خشع قلب هذا لخشعت جوارحه if the heart of that person were still his senses would be still his limbs would be still when we are in salah and you know, we look this way or this way See, see what I'm doing? Let alone this way or, or this way. Or. Just, just, just like, just like, like that. See in us, there is a text that teaches, Subhanallah. May Allah help us all. May Allah help us all. A text that teaches, إذا فعل العبد ذلك, إذا التفت العبد. قال الله تعالى إلى أين يا عبدي إلى خير مني When the abd, the servant does that in salah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say My servant Where to? Somewhere better than me? Let alone My heart go in somewhere else Allah When I do that Or you do that Remember this, God telling you inside of you, Allah telling you and me inside of us, where to somewhere better than me? This is Salah. This is an audience with me, with the Divine. Whereas, is it like that, let alone better than that? Subhanahu wa ta'ala, ma altafa, ma arhama, ma akrama, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you were not so, so forgiving, so generous, so benevolent, I think in our Salah, He would uh, punish us. Because in Salah, and we are still somewhere else. We come back to this again, inshaAllah ta'ala. But this is as Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ salah. And that salah that is going to be helpful to me in my life, in this dunya, and in akhirah, to be therefore a representative of the divine, is the salah in which my qalb is. May Allah help me and you strive through prayer also, that our hearts be in salah. So that our hearts continue to be with Allah all the time. And in salah, is training for that. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم وصل الله مهسل وبارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين وأصحابه الميامين والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شهد الله لا إله إلا أنت